Hey everybody, Mark Youngworth here. As many of you may know, I have various videos out on YouTube exposing Alex Jones and various other counterintelligence agents within the so-called truth movement. Up until now, my videos on Alex Jones have been thorough, but not thorough enough. What you're about to see is most likely by far the most thorough and damning evidence presented against Alex Jones and Infowars.com. There are many wolves in sheep's clothing in this movement, and Alex Jones commands by far the largest audience, hence it being so important to expose this one individual. After viewing what you are about to see, I encourage you all to post it on Facebook Share my videos on YouTube, not only this one, but my other videos, which can be found at youtube.com slash Derek in the Midwest. Derek is D-E-R-E-K. And please, get this information out to as many people as possible. Because you must remember, the people that are in charge of running the planet do not sink millions and millions of dollars into a project unless there is some gigantic purpose to it. Thus, Alex Jones has a gigantic purpose. At some point in the future, he will be responsible for leading a gigantic mass of truthers astray. And I must do everything in my power, as I hope you will too, to prevent that from happening. I'd like to give a special thanks to Thomas Richards for all of his hard work and investigation in exposing Alex Jones in Infowars. He's been working on doing so for many years and he's one of the people who brought me full circle on coming to my conclusions on Alex Jones. So Thomas, if you see this, thank you sir and God bless you. Without further ado, Alex Jones, the Knights of Malta, and the Jesuits. I just found an article that states if one enters the term Knights of Malta into an Alex Jones comment section, like if it was a prison planet, that it will not be there. It will be censored. So I have asked the question, why do you censor Knights of Malta? And we're going to go ahead and submit it. And it shows that it's sent right there. We're going to refresh. That comment is not there. It's not there. On August 16th, 2011, I did a search at Infowars.com for the words Knights of Malta. When you search for anything at Infowars.com using their search function, it will return results including the words that you search for, whether they be in the article itself or in the comment section of any article at Infowars.com. The first few results that get returned are always sponsored results and are not actually results for Infowars.com, so we'll skip down past those. The first result, when searching for Knights of Malta at Infowars.com, is the headline, Obama's political support is collapsing. The next result is the headline, Dozens of teens arrested in Philadelphia on first nights of new... That's where it ends. The next one, Gladio, the secret U.S. war to subvert Italian democracy. The next headline, Representation, Secession, and Taxation. The next headline, Insurance giants will use taxpayers to bail out costs from UK riots. The next headline is the DEA contracting Blackwater. The next headline, Russia backs return to gold standard to solve financial crisis. Next headline, drug groups to reap swine flu billions. 
Next headline, G20 terrorist plot exposed as teenagers with plastic guns and the next headline, official 2008 Bilderberg participant list. As you can see, underneath each of these headlines is displayed the short piece of either the article or the comment on the article which contains the words Knights of Malta. For example, here under the headline, Obama's political support is collapsing, you see the words Knights of Malta show up in this sentence. Ooh, I forgot to mention the Jesuit Satanic Order Knights of Malta New World Order wannabes, bitches of Satan. Clearly, that is not part of an InfoWars article. That is made as a comment. As a matter of fact, when you search for the words Knights of Malta at InfoWars.com, there is only one result that returns where you find the words Knights of Malta actually used in the article itself. The rest of the results that return have the words Knights of Malta in the comments, not in the article itself. This means that there has only been one article in the history of InfoWars.com that has covered the Knights of Malta. Considering InfoWars.com has been around for over a decade, this is quite suspicious. I find it even more suspicious that on August 16th, 2011, when searching for the term Knights of Malta at InfoWars.com, there were only 10 total results that contain the words Knights of Malta. This means that in the more than 10 years that InfoWars.com has been around, that there have only been 10 articles in the history of that entire more than a decade period where people have even posted the words Knights of Malta. When taking into consideration Alex Jones's prominent position as the biggest name in the so-called alternative media, as well as taking into consideration how many researchers there are out there in the research community that know about the Vatican's high position in the New World Order, and finally considering the amount of traffic that InfoWars.com receives as being the biggest website and source of information in the so-called alternative media, the idea that there are only 10 results being returned when searching for the words Knights of Malta at InfoWars.com is absolutely laughable and absurd. Or at least it would be, if this were not such a serious matter. Now let's take a look at some of these articles and see in what context the words Knights of Malta have been used. Oh, imagine that. We can't even see in what context these words were used because the comments on these articles have been closed. Thankfully, in many of these instances, we can gain the proper context of how the words Knights of Malta were used by searching for those words and looking at the bits and pieces given under the article headlines when the results return. Under the headline, Dozens of Teens Arrested in Philadelphia on First Nights of New Nine, we find, We don't have a government anymore. We are all under mind control and spell of the Satanic Freemasons, Knights of Malta, the Jesuits. The next headline, Gladio, the Secret War to Subvert Italian Democracy, is the Infowars.com article that does address, in the article, the Knights of Malta, and I will get to this in just a moment. And the headline below that one, Representation, Secession, and Taxation, 
We don't have a government anymore. We are all under the mind control spell of the Satanic Freemasons, Knights of Malta, the Jesuits. And that is the same comment posted to a previous article. This seems to indicate that somebody was trying to make a point of alerting people about the Knights of Malta and the Jesuits in the Vatican's position in the New World Order. But, again, these comments have been closed. The next headline, Insurance giants will use taxpayers to bail out costs from UK riots, and we find they are following the harlot in purple, Jesuit colors, Sitting on the throne are the Knights of Malta, behind the scenes. And as you can see, in the bits and pieces under the rest of the headlines, there is no information whatsoever containing the words Knights of Malta. And again, the comments on those articles have been closed as well. This is where it gets really interesting. Let's take a look at a search done at Infowars.com for the words Knights of Malta, on August 23rd, 2011, which is just one week later. Before there were 10 results, now there are only 8. Let's see what the differences are. When comparing these searches by looking at the snippets of information below the headlines, we find that all of the articles which return results that contain the words Knights of Malta in the snippets have been removed, with the exception of the one article containing those words that InfoWars published in 2004 titled Gladio, the secret US war to subvert Italian democracy. Why would this article be the only result that displays the words Knights of Malta? We can find the answer by reading the article itself, specifically the section labeled Fraternal Bonds. Here we find a very revealing quote. The author, Arthur E. Rouse, writes, quote, Two ancient, mysterious, international fraternities kept the loosely linked Gladio programs from flying apart. The Knights of Malta played a formative role after the war, but the Order of Freemasonry and its most notorious lodge in Italy known as Propaganda Due, or P2, was far more influential." Unquote. This is a very telling thing to write. It makes it appear that Freemasonry is more powerful and has more influence than the Order of the Knights of Malta. The problem here is that the Knights of Malta are the military arm of the Vatican, while the Jesuit Order is the intelligence arm of the Vatican. And the Jesuit Order controls literally all the world's secret societies through the umbrella of Freemasonry, which is international. And we could go on and on and on. This is a very interesting one. This is Michelangelo Tamburni. 1720, this is the general of the Jesuits, the general speaking to the Duke of Branca, and he said the following. See, my lord, from this room, from this room I govern not only Paris, but China. Not only China, but the whole world without anyone knowing how it was managed. Interesting. This is what the Jesuits themselves had to say. Well, everything I say is a quote. This here is Jean-Baptiste Janssen. He ruled from 1946 to 1964, and uh, he looks like a charming gentleman, very cheerful. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, you can see that this photograph was taken from the Saturday Evening Post, 1959, and this is what he is in command of. And now we will want to deal with these issues in the next session. He controlled the following secret societies. The Sovereign Military Order of Malta. So he is in control of the Knights of Malta. The Scottish Rite Shrine of Freemasonry. The Order of the Illuminati. The Knights of Columbus. The Knights of the Klu Klux Klan. The Nibirit the Nation of Islam and its private army called the Fruit of Islam, the Mafia Commission, Opus Dei, along with a host of lesser brotherhoods. So each one of those secret societies is controlled by the Jesuits. How do they control it? And what is their aim? And who is a member, for example, of the Knights of Malta? Who today is a member of the Knights of Columbus? 
who is a member of, of Benai Barith, who controls the fruit of Islam, who controls Opus Dei, who controls Skull and Bones and all the other secret societies and what is their agenda. That is what we have to find out. Remember that Rome wants to regain total dominion and if they are the centre of Templar theology, then they want to control the world for the dragon, not for Jesus Christ. The dragon gave them their power and their seat and great authority. This is scary. And this power must be in control in your country as well. At what then do the Jesuits aim? According to them they seek the greater glory of God, but if you examine the facts you will find they aim at universal dominion alone. It is they who rule the world. One quote after the other. Let's have a look at Freemasons. The grand design exposed says, the truth is the Jesuits of Rome have perfected Freemasonry to be their most magnificent and effective tool accomplishing their purposes among Protestants. Therefore, it must be concluded that although the Knights of Malta are subordinate to the Jesuit order, that the Knights of Malta are far more powerful than Freemasonry, especially considering the broadness of Freemasonry and the fact that most members of the lower degrees of Freemasonry are everyday people who join because they simply want to help their business connections and rarely have any idea at all about what goes on at the higher degrees. The Order of the Knights of Malta, on the other hand, is a far more selective and elite order consisting solely of men in positions of power and influence with strong ties and loyalties to the Vatican. Granted, the P2 Lodge is quite possibly the most powerful Freemasonic Lodge on earth and is home to many members of the Knights of Malta. The way that Arthur Rouse presents his information puts the reader under the impression that the Knights of Malta are not nearly as powerful or influential as Freemasonry is, when in reality, it is just the opposite. This is why Alex Jones posted this article to InfoWars, and why he keeps it up in the listing when you search for the words Knights of Malta. That way, Jones can point to this one whitewash article and claim that he has addressed the subject. Now we'll go to Google and search for the words InfoWars Knights of Malta. This person from Columbus, Ohio says, I don't know, but I tried it myself and my comment got censored. And I know it was not just that it hadn't gone on yet. I saw it on and then it was removed. I also had another comment removed because I stated my legal opinion on a particular subject. I can't stand people who censor, especially people who are claiming to be fighting for freedom in the Constitution. The second result that we see here Hirsch, high-ranking members of U.S. military, part of Knights of Malta. And as you can see, this is from Infowars.com. Ask yourself, why does this article not show up when you search for Knights of Malta at Infowars.com, but it does show up when you search for Infowars Knights of Malta on Google? Going to the article here at Infowars.com, you can see right in the headline itself, Hirsch. High-ranking members, U.S. military, part of Knights of Malta, Opus Die. Infowars did publish this article and still has the article up on the website. However, no one will ever find this article because if you search for the words Knights of Malta on Infowars, this article is not returned in the results, evidenced by my previous searches. And imagine that, you scroll down and comments on this article are closed. As a matter of fact, if you type in the word Hirsch in InfoWars search, it will not return either. As you can see, 
that article is nowhere to be found. And just to be thorough, now let's check and see what happens when you search Infowars.com for the term Jesuits. First result, Behaviorism, Psychoanalysis, and Psychological Manipulation. Click on this article. Scroll down. Imagine that. Comments are closed. Next article, Georgetown University terminates Douglas Fife. Checking out that article. Scrolling down. Comments are closed again. And we'll go to one more. Hacking the human brain, Alex Jones. There's a war on for your mind. Oh, there is a war on for your mind. We're proving that right now. And here you see the article, Hacking the Human Brain. We scroll down. And it says there are 84 responses to hacking the human brain. That's not 84 responses. Now is the one, two, three, four responses. But there should be 84 responses. Yet there are only four. Now what do you suppose is it that Infowars is trying to hide? Alex Jones is friends with many powerful Catholics and purposely hides the Jesuit order's involvement in the NWL, which the Jesuit order has created. I studied everything Alex Jones did. I saw 9-11, the road to tyranny, when it first came out, and I thought he was sincere at first. But since then, he has exposed himself as a Jesuit coadjutor, a friend and helper of the Jesuit order, the Jesuit order which has brought this country on to the brink of destruction. Please be patient and listen to my evidence. I know that after I show you my information, that many of you will question Alex Jones's sincerity as well. Alex Jones, this is the title of my new page that you can see on spiritualsmart.com. Uh, there's a link on the main page. Uh, Alex Jones, CIA agent of the continued Project Mockingbird and Jesuit temporal coadjutor and alternative media gatekeeper for the Vatican. It is well known that the CIA have been allowed by past presidents and members of the Congress to operate through our news sources and media and do mind control experimentation on the public. Operation Mockingbird. I say this because Congress and President has or supposed to have the oversight of the CIA. So they are responsible for whatever the CIA does. In that failed uh, Bay of Pigs invasion in Cuba, uh, JFK took the heat for that. And he responded, uh, he was, said he was going to uh, break the CIA into a thousand pieces. So being that the President and Congress uh, have oversight. Uh, this is uh, an outrage. Uh, what's going on? Okay. The CIA worked with the Nazi war criminals right after World War II and helped them escape war crime tribunals and brought them into the CIA and America via Operation Paperclip as also the Vatican helped the Nazis to escape being punished through the Vatican rat lines. So here we have a Jesuit creation, the CIA, working together with the Vatican, achieving the same purpose, helping their Nazis uh, to escape punishment. Um, 
working together with the Vatican and Jesuits during the most horrible inquisition that the world has ever known. They were doing this. The CIA were aiding the Nazis, and so was the Vatican. And the CIA was created by a very high up Knight of Malta, uh, an officer in the army. His name was uh, William Donovan, or William Wild Bill Donovan. Okay, so this same combination of people are working t together now to destroy America through their orchestration of the events we saw unfold on 9-11 and the assault of our constitutional rights in America in the name of combating these terrorists that originated from them in the first place. And as we know, there, there was a Jesuit uh, Georgetown professor, Viet Dinh, who was the main architect of the uh, Patriot Act, and it was written before 9-11 they used 9-11 to pass all the legislation. Okay, and it is the same combination of people and groups who have infiltrated the so-called alternative media, with the exception of a very few. Okay, Mockingbird was an immense financial undertaking with funds flowing from the CIA, largely through Congress for cultural freedom the Congress for Cultural Freedom, sorry, CCF, founded by Tom Braden with Pat Buchanan of CNN's Crossfire. Okay, so CNN has the CIA funded and worked with the CIA. And CNN are the ones who had uh, Alex Jones on, on their showbiz tonight, where he publicly lauded a Jesuit coadjutor, Martin Sheen, who has done a lot of work for the Jesuits. And he, and he took his name Sheen after the uh, charismatic uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen. And his real name was Estevez. And several of his children kept Estevez, but Charlie Sheen kept Sheen. Now, I'd like to know why. Uh, and he's the one that teamed up with uh, Alex Jones for this uh, very public 9-11 questioning the government. And after that, Charlie Sheen was made the highest paid sitcom star. Okay. Now listen to this. Here's where Alex Jones comes in. Mockingbird was an immense financial undertaking with funds flowing from the CIA largely through the Congress for Cultural Freedom, CCF, founded by Tom Braden with Pat Buchanan of CNN's Crossfire. Do you know that this is in Alex Jones's own website? So here you can see an article stating that Pat Buchanan was involved in the CIA working through the media right in Alex Jones' own website. In other words, Alex Jones has a known CIA asset who is Jesuit trained as a child and as a Knight of Malta and is a good friend of Alex Jones, Alex Jones considers him. And between him, Ron Paul, and Pat Buchanan, you have this really close friendship and uh, lifting each other up and um, promoting one another. Okay. In other words, Jones has a known CIA asset who was Jesuit trained and is Knight of Malta regularly on his show. Are you starting to see why Jones won't talk about this Vatican issue? Can you see a problem here? Being that Pat Buchanan was a major player in the CIA playing mind control games on America through the media. And Alex Jones has him on his... On a, as a regular on his quote-unquote media program. Are you that sound asleep, people? Don't you see that, see that the CIA is working through the Alex Jones show? Take a look at Buchanan's counterpart, who was on the show with Pat Buchanan for three years on that CNN's Crossfire. His name was Thomas Brady. Okay? Listen to this, this history. In 1940, he joined the British Army Office of Strategic Services, the OSS. That was um, 
the intelligence agency that became basically the closed down and the CIA started. Okay. So it was the OSS, then it was the CIA. Okay, he moved to Washington, D.C. and became part of a, a group of journalists known as the Georgetown Set. And Braden joined the Central Intelligence Agency and in 1950 became head of the International Organizations Division. Okay, and this is an American journalist. The CIA, OSS, a long history in... Uh, this intelligence, covert intelligence operations. And he did the show with Pete Cannon for three years, this guy. All right? They say he left the CIA. I don't believe that. They, they always say, yeah, he left uh, the Jesuit order. He left the CIA and then they continue off. And you, you got to really question um, if they really left or not. I mean, these people are liars. I mean, that's their job is to lie to you. And, uh, you know, when the Bible says uh, all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Okay, so they say Braden left the CIA in 1954 and became, lo and behold, became an owner of a California newspaper, the Blade Tribune. You know, he became a popular newspaper columnist. He worked as a political commentator on radio and television. He also was at one time a candidate for the governor of California. From 1978 to 1984, he co-hosted, oh, so it was more than three years, it was uh, seven, six years. He co-hosted the, the Buchanan Braden Program, a three-hour radio show with Pat Buchanan. He and Buchanan also host. okay, that was what was three years also hosted the CNN program Crossfire. At the show's inception of 1982, generally debating Buchanan or Robert Novak, although Braden's role in the programs was promoting as representing the political left, some critics have questioned this label. Media critic Jeff Cohen in a Truth Out column titled, I'm not a leftist, but I play one on TV, notes during the Braden Buchanan years, LSD guru Timothy Leary told the reporter that watching Crossfire was like watching the left wing of the CIA debating the right wing of the CIA. It may have been Leary's most sober observation ever. Okay, and then Buchanan, he was baptized into the Roman Catholic Church and has remained Catholic throughout his life, attending the traditional Latin. He has also spent most of his education at Catholic institutions. He attended Blessed Sacrament School, the Jesuit-run Gonzaga College High School, and Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Buchanan graduated from Gonzaga with a 98 average. He graduated in cum laude from Georgetown with degrees in English and philosophy. So you have Snyder Malta. Uh, created the CIA, and you have these Skull and Bones members as part of it. I mean, who do you think's in control? Of course, Pat Buchanan is a Roman Catholic, and uh, Jones has other uh, Roman Catholics on there too. And he just recently did a lecture at St. Edward's University in Austin, where his sister attends. All right, so come on, please look into the Catholic Church. And that alone will expose uh, Alex Jones's association with the Catholic Church and what that means. And Alex Jones has a huge entourage of people feeding him information, okay? And this information is just, uh, okay, they say mainstream doesn't cover it. Okay, that's true, all right? Not really. They don't really cover some of the stuff that he covers. But the stuff that he covers, it doesn't matter anyway, okay? Because he's not getting to the root of the problem, okay? It's good to know about those different things, but it's not good to be fed all these different things without attaching the Vatican to it. Um, <clears throat> so I put together these videos 
about Alex Jones because I know he has a huge following. People just like think he's the best, and I just I'm very suspicious of Alex Jones. His friend Pat Buchanan is has an unbelievable history. Now his friend Pat Buchanan. I did a search on, on just InfoWars, not including Prison Planet and Jones Report and some of his other stuff, but just on InfoWars, and there were 16 articles that were mainly about Pat Buchanan and what Pat Buchanan was saying. So Pat Buchanan has a platform through, through InfoWars.com, and Pat Buchanan, please look into Pat Buchanan. He's a mainstream newscaster political of I mean just look at what he's doing he's on N MSNBC all the time he had all his own show on CNN uh, CNN um, I mean this is a conspiracy and Jones is a part of it and I wish you people would wake up so Pat Buchanan did a radio show with Thomas Braden for six years and then he did CNN's crossfire with Thomas Braden for three years. So that's nine years that these men work together. Okay, Pat Buchanan is a Knight of Malta. And so is the creator of the CIA. Okay, so let's look at Thomas Braden. Mockingbird. Go to my, go to my site, please. And click on my, that link on my main page that says Alex Jones, Mockingbird, uh, Vatican Gatekeeper, CIA agent. Click on that and go down to the middle of the page and read my additional research and questions on Thomas Braden. Do search Thomas Braden Mockingbird. Mockingbird was this man, Thomas Braden's baby. He worked for six years on a radio show with Pat Buchanan and three years on CNN's Crossfire. When Nixon took the Oval Office in 1969, Buchanan worked at as a White House advisor and as a speechwriter to both Nixon and Vice President Spiro Agnew. Uh, Buchanan was influential in the White House, okay? When Nixon was in there, he had the whole Bush administration all over him, like white on rice, okay? And Buchanan was the main guy in there, all right? Uh, so think about the scandal that is attached to Nixon, okay? And think about Buchanan was his uh, advisor and, and speechwriter, okay? And you have this guy doing interviews with Alex Jones. He's a good friend of Alex Jones. Come on, people. Now I have two questions. Why and how did Alex Jones get mixed up with Pat Buchanan? And why is Pat Buchanan publicly supporting Ron Paul along with Alex Jones? You have to really question what's going on here. Pat Buchanan publicly came out and is supporting Ron Paul, and so is Alex Jones. Ron Paul did an interview with Alex Jones, and so did Pat Buchanan all the time. Okay, there's like a nice little triangle there. Okay, so why would Alex Jones have someone so involved in shady politics and shady CIA people like Thomas Braden? Why would he have these people, why would he have them on as a regular on his show and have them on his website and consider him a friend? The father of the CIA was also a Knight of Malta. There are two Google pages worth of articles in Alex Jones' site uh, that, have, that involve Pat Buchanan. Don't you think that this, along with all the other Je uh, Jesuit Vatican omissions and Alex Jones reporting, tips the scales against him? Please, people, wake up. See who the enemy is. Okay, I'm commanded by the Lord to expose this. The Lord says in Ephesians 5.11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm reproving them by exposing them.